Good morning students, once again welcome to our physics lesson and today we are looking at the energy losses in a transformer. Transformers that we use now, we use within the power lines have got their own deficiencies and one of the deficiencies is the energy losses. In other words, not all the energy at the input of the transformer is being trans transformed or transferred to the output. There are mainly four energy losses in a transformer and the first one that we have is the flux leakage. Flux leakage. What do you mean by flux leakage? Now, when current is changing in the primary coil, the, the flux, magnetic flux from the primary coil is supposed to reach the secondary coil. However, this is not always the case. Some of the magnetic flux disappear on the way and this reduces the efficiency of the transformer. This is solved by efficient design of the transformers that you can see on the board here. This is one of the transformers and what is the difference between this one and the other transformer? Here, both the primary and the secondary coil of the transformers are wood on the same common core. The primary coil, then on top of that we have the secondary coil being coiled on top, on top of the previous one. This is another type of the modern transformer and with this design the problem of flux leakage is effectively solved. Then we have another energy loss that is the resistance of the coil which is known, also known as the copper losses. This is prevented by use of thick copper wires. Thick copper wires reduce the resistance and hence reduce the heating effect within the transformer. Then we have the eddy currents in the core. Then the fourth one is the hysteresis loss. This is the loss of energy in the process of transmission from the primary coil to the secondary coil. Then we have another application of electromagnetic induction and that is the alternative current generator, that is AC. This is the diagram of how an AC works. It has got two slip rings as you can see and then we have a rectangular coil right in between the two magnets which provide the electric field. Now the magnets are curved in a concave manner. This is to enable the radial concentration of the magnetic field so that they can be maximally be cut off during rotation by the coil. The split slip rings are two. They are covered with the carbon brushes on either side and the reason why the carbon brushes are used is that one, the carbon brushes are slippery and therefore they act as lubricants and secondly they are good conductors of electric current. The rotation of the coil is determined by Fleming's right hand rule. Using that, AB is rotating upwards and the magnetic field is emanating from the north pole to the south pole. So using Fleming's right hand rule, we can see that the current on this side is moving from point A to point B and along CD the current is moving from point C to point B. Now when the coil is at horizontal like that, then it means the angle between the field and the coil is maximum, that is 90 degrees. As it rotates, by the time it reaches the vertical axis, there will be no cutting of the field and therefore no current will be induced in the coil. This is the explanation further on uh, the AC generator. The current flows through the external circuit via the slip ring 2 and brush X. Brush Y and slip ring 1 complete the circuit. Brush X is thus positive terminal while Y is the negative. When coin rotates from horizontal to vertical position, the angle at which the slides of the coil 
Kurtz magnetic field reduces from 90 degrees to zero. Likewise, the induced EMF reduces from maximum to zero. When the coil rotates past the vertical position, AD moves downwards as CD moves upwards. The angle theta at which the size of the coil cuts the magnetic field increases from zero degrees to 90 degrees when coil is horizontal. The induced EMF increases from zero to maximum value and direction of current in the coil reverses from DCB A brush Y now becomes positive and X negative. The magnitude of induced EMF obeys the sinusoidal equation given by E is equal to E naught sine theta. This is the graph representing the rotation of the coil within its axis. At this point, when at zero degrees, it means that the coil is vertical. At that point, there is no current being induced. Then, as it rotates, at 90 degrees, there is maximum current being produced. We are talking of maximum here at 90 degrees because this is the point where the coil and the field interact at 90 degrees and that is when maximum current is being induced. So rotation continues like that, like that, as long as the coil rotates within the magnetic field. Now the EMF is given by E naught sine theta, which is the equation of that wave. Next we have the direct current generator. The difference between the direct current generator and the alternating current generator is at the point where the coil is connected to the outside circuit. In AC generator we have the slip rings but in a DC generator we have the split rings and we call them the commutators. It's a ring but in between there is a gap. This allows the transition of the, of the coil from one ring to another in the process of rotation. Next is simply the graph showing the output, that is the current produced by the direct generator. As you can see, the current produced by the direct generator is on one sided, it's not alternating. It is unidirectional as indicated by the graph. No current is moving on the opposite side, it only moves in one direction as indicated here on the graph. Then in both AC and DC generators, EMF is controlled or can be increased by the following. One, increasing the speed of rotation of the coil, increasing the number of turns of the coil, increasing the strength of the magnetic field, and finally, winding the coil on a laminated soft iron core. We also have a dynamo as another application of the electromagnetic induction. This is how a dynamo looks like. And in this case, in a dynamo, it is the coil that rotates. Unlike other applications, here it is the coil that rotates and then the current is being induced. This is the current that is used to light the bulb that's always in front of a bicycle, especially at night. Lastly, we have what we call the moving coil micrometer, microphone, which is an application of the electromagnetic induction. As you can see, this is the diagram of part of a microphone. This is the sound wave that hits the microphone and this causes to and fro motion within the magnet, the magnet and the motion of the coil cuts through the magnetic fields and in the process current is being induced in the coil which moves to the speaker. This one is uh, the graph indicating how the EMF or the current is being produced. As you can see, it's not very smooth, showing that the current produced is not constant. 
The reason is because the current depends on the strength of the sound waves, the intensity of the, of the, of the person using the microphone. So since the voice varies, the current produced within the circuit also varies as indicated on the diagram. We have the induction coil, which is normally used in the vehicles. It is used to ignite air mixture in a car engine. The way it works is explained right here, and you can go through that step by step, it's well explanatory, and from there you'll be able to understand how it works. Then this is the diagrammatic representation of the induction coil. As you can see, the spark is produced at this point, and this is where the ignition of the fuel is done. Here we have both the primary and the secondary coil, wound on a common soft iron core. Then here is the contact, the spring. The spring is the one that controls the movement, actually it connects and disconnects the circuit. And in the process, the magnetic field keeps on changing, which induces EMF in the secondary coil. The capacitor here is used to maintain or store charges within the circuit which is very important and again it controls the charges flowing into the sparking point. Uh, up to that point we've come to the end of our lesson and also the end of the topic electromagnetic induction. I believe you have followed what we have gone through and for more information you can read your books, the KLD books and other reference books. Otherwise, have a nice day.